end of the activity, the students are expected to close their brain shrimps, evaluate the cytotoxicity effects of specific substances or extracts, report your results and analysis. We will enumerate the materials needed, discuss the whole bioassay procedure from sample preparation, hatching of shrimps, harvesting of shrimps, to treatment of samples. We will also discuss the data you need to record and how you will present it in the laboratory report. The kit contains the following materials. 8 oz plastic transparent cup, 2 spoon stirrers, 2 1 ml syringe, 6 30 ml sauce cups, 1 20 ml measuring cup, and 1 vial of brine shrimp eggs. Take note, the brine shrimp eggs must be kept in the refrigerator if not used. You will provide the following. Salt, preferably non-iodized. Distilled water. Container with a lid for the salt solution. A magnifying glass or you can download the following app, Magnifier, from Google Play Store. And of course, your choice of samples. Your group will have to choose what samples will you test for toxicity, but each member will be having either a different brand or concentration. Your samples can be one with known medicinal values such as herbal plants, or food or beverage products for both humans and animals, or to test the toxicity of products used by humans such as cologne and sanitizers. Samples can be solid, liquid, or an extract or tincture. All solid samples must be completely dissolved in water. Liquid samples should not be viscous so that it won't hinder the movement of the nopli. It should be transparent or translucent to allow light to pass through, encouraging the shrimps to move around. Some samples can be extracts from plants. A tincture is typically an extract of plant or animal material dissolved in ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Most herbal extracts are dissolved in water or any solutions other than alcohol. Be careful in choosing for a plant to make an extract. You must be familiar with it how it is usually prepared, and that it will not cause any allergic reactions to you in preparing it. Wear gloves and apron in preparing the extract. You wash the leaves thoroughly at least twice. With adult supervision, cut the stems and discard it. Cut the leaves into small pieces. Using a mortar and pestle, grind the pieces of leaves while adding small amount of water or alcohol for tinctures. Filter using filter paper, coffee filter, or a cheesecloth or kacha. You may also use a blender or food processor, but make sure you will use only water as the solvent. The resulting extract will be your sample. The extract or most of your samples might be too concentrated to be used against the brine shrimps. Therefore, a dilution is necessary. 
A dilution can be performed not only to lower the concentration of the sample that is being tested so that it is in range, but also to help eliminate interferences from other substances that may be present in the sample that can artificially alter the analysis. For our purpose, a 1 is to 10 dilution is suggested. This means you will prepare your samples by adding 1 drop of the sample to 9 drops of water or your solvent or 0.1 ml of your sample to 0.9 ml of your solvent. As mentioned earlier, each group will agree on a type of sample but each member will have either a different brand or concentration. Each student has 6 test sauce cups. 3 for samples while 3 for the control. For those without samples, only shrimps and salt solution. This will allow each sample to have triplicates. This sample data table shows the content of the 6 test sauce cups. Before hatching the shrimps, make sure your samples are available already. In hatching the shrimps, we will prepare first your salt solution or artificial sea water. Using your spoon stirrer, get 30 scoops or approximately 8 grams of salt, preferably non-iodized. Place the salt in a separate container and add 200 ml of distilled water using your measuring cup. Tap water should not be used since it contains chlorine. If there is no other option, the tap water must be unused overnight in order to remove chlorine. Mix thoroughly and label properly the container. To set up the makeshift hatchery, using the measuring cup, carefully pour 100 ml of your artificial seawater into the 8 ounce cup, your makeshift hatchery. Using the spoon stirrer, place a spoonful of the eggs into the cup. Do not mix. Make sure that the spoon stirrer that you use is dry. For the incubation, use the lid of the brine shrimp kit to cover the 8 ounce cup hatchery. Let the eggs hatch for 20 to 24 hours. Check your hatchery for free swimming no plea. They look like mosquito wrigglers. The unhatched eggs will sink at the bottom of the cup while some will float. The free swimming no plea will be swimming in the water, usually near the top air liquid interface. To transfer your shrimps, Using your phone magnifier and the 1 ml syringe, transfer approximately 10 to 15 brine shrimps or 2 to 3 ml to each of your testing sauce cups. Be careful to transfer less of unhatched eggs as possible. For the solution volume, Using the other 1 ml syringe, add artificial seawater, approximately 7 ml into the sauce cups to make a total volume of 10 ml. Using your magnifier, count the number of shrimps in each sauce cups and write it at table 1. Let the shrimps adapt to their environment for 24 hours. Write your initial number of shrimps on the column under day 2 where time is negative 24 hours. For day 3, recount the number of shrimps before you place your samples. Record it again at table 1. Some shrimps may die after the transfer or some of the unhatched eggs may still hatch. In adding the samples, place a drop of your sample either 0.05 to 0.2 ml on three of your test sauce cups. 
The other three test sauce cups will serve as your control setup. No sample space, only shrimps and salt solution. During the experiment, the nopli do not receive food. So the death of the nopli may be due to the effect of the plant extract or starvation. To ensure the mortality effect of the extract, the control sample containing only nopli is also used. In any case, hatched nopli can survive for up to 72 hours without food because they still feed on their yolk sac. Take note of any changes immediately after placing a drop of your sample. After every 6 hours for 24 hours, count the number of lime shrimps for each of your testing sauce cups. Count 3 times for precision. Record your data in Table 1. Record the number of shrimps before adding samples under Day 3. Time equal to 0 column. Count the number of shrimps approximately every 6 hours. This slide shows a sample data. Get the average of the three test sauce cups and get the percentage of live shrimps. To get the percentage of live shrimps, you divide the number of live shrimps in the sample cups with the number of live shrimps in your control and multiply that by 100. Complete Table 1. The group will share their Table 1 information to fill out the Table 2 or group data. Take note, there are instances that the number of shrimps in your sample is greater than that in the control, so expect a percentage of greater than 100. This means your sample might serve as feed for the shrimps or can induce hatching. Plot your data in Table 2 in a smooth line graph. The x-axis refers to the time or hours while the y-axis refers to the percentage of live shrimps. You are expected to have 4 to 5 lines representing each sample per group. From this graph, you will be able to see some patterns or effects of your samples for the discussion part of your paper.